are two methods of pre-stressing, pre-tensioning and post-tensioning. Pre-tensioning involves stressing the tendon before casting of the concrete. As for post-tensioning, the concrete is cast before the tensioning process takes place. This figure shows the pre-tensioning process of a pre-stressed member. First, steel wire or steel strand are stretched. Then the concrete are cast and cured. The curing are normally done by using steam curing. It is to increase the rate of hardening of the concrete so that early transfers of the stress to the concrete can be done. Then the forces is released against the concrete so that stress is to be transferred into the concrete. As for the post-tensioning, ducts are laid within the concrete. The duct can be in the form of straight or in the form of curvature. It is normally held by a series of light cages. It is to ensure the duct in the correct positions along the beam. Then the concrete are cast and cured. Later, the tendons are jacked against the concrete. And lastly, the tendons are anchored to the end of the concrete. Through this, the pre-tensioning force can be transferred to the concrete element. The circumstances for the applications of the pre-tension concrete and post-tension concrete differ. Pre-tension concrete can be fabricated in the factory and mass productions can be done so that are more economical and under a controlled conditions. It can be fabricated by using the long line system. This is an example of long line systems where several pre-stress members can be cast together by using one tendon. This speed up the fabrication process of the pre-stress members. As for the post-tension concrete, it is suitable for on-site constructions. It can be in the form of one single unit or an assembly of a separated precast units. The members for the post-tension concrete are normally relatively large with long span which make it difficult to be transported from one place to another through the trucks. The tendon for the pre-tensioning members are typically small diameter with good bonding characteristics. This allows efficient transfer of the stress from the tendon to the concrete. As for the post-tension members, the tendon goes through the duct. Therefore, there is no bond to the concrete with the member. The remaining space between the duct and the tendon can be left empty or can be filled with high strength grout. The grout helps to transmit the force between the steel and the concrete. It improves the strength of the member and also protects the strength from corrosions. With that, the duct is preferably to be filled with grout. The two methods of pre-stressing has their own limitations. Post-tension members are time-consuming. Time is required for casting, hardening, 
and stressing the tendon. As for the pre-tension member, the tendon must be straight. It is difficult to have the tendon in a curvature shape. However, this can be resolved by reducing the eccentric or force near the end of the member through debonding and deflecting. In this figure, the tendon is deflected at the mix band by using two forces. The deflection support can be cut off after the transfer. Alternatively, the tendon may be deboned at a certain stretch of the member to reduce the efficiency of the stresses being transferred to the concrete. These two methods can be used to give the similar effect for the tendon which is arranged in the curvature curve. The losses generated in the tendon between the pre-tension and post-tension member also differ slightly. The long-term losses are similar. However, for the short-term losses, there are additional losses due to the post-tension member. The frictions and wobble is the losses due to the frictions between the duct and the tendon due to the curvature. The drawing of the wedges is the slip movement of the anchor. For the slip movement of the anchor, stresses reduce in the tendon. The short-term losses occur nearly immediately after the transfer stage. This figure shows the losses in a pre-stressed member. The y-axis represents the stresses in the tendon. Initially, the tendon is stressed at this level. However, due to the short-term losses, the stresses after the losses is here. The member requires a certain stretch of the bone length for the stress to develop to its full capacity.